realized I could change someone's life through design early on in my career. I had been working doing contract administration on a developer site for a large continuing care retirement community. We had opened the first assisted living building in Maryland. And I was in that building and I'm watching how people are starting to try to use this building that obviously they had zero input into. There was no room for the staff. There was no place for their things. There was no personal space. And I thought, okay, so let's check this out from the resident perspective, you know, and starting to see how people interact with space. So senior living started in the acute care marketplace, and so it had more of an institutionalized feel. So in changing and looking at deinstitutionalization, I call it the 10%, 90% rule. So 10% is why an elder goes in for services. They need some kind of care component or they have a diagnosis that leads to that. 90% of that person is the person's life, what they like, what they don't like, the amenities, the affinities. And we lose that in institutionalized care because they just look at the diagnosis. I met with an administrator one day and I said, so what is your care population like? Tell me about your residents. And she's like, well, we've got three with dementia. We've got two that have, you know, problems with their diabetes and controlling it. Da, da, da. Like, no, 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 no. And I want to know like what their favorite meal is. What is their favorite color? When do they get up in the morning? When do they go to sleep at night? What do they like to do during the day? And, and she kind of stopped in her tracks and was like, oh, I'm really totally missing this, aren't I? And I said, yeah, I said, this is really something that talks about the person and living. So the difference from institutionalized care going into residential care is literally that. Look at the person as though they're the living person they've always been, and how do you activate all of that? And that's part of their care plan. So their care plan isn't about their diagnosis. It is, you know, because there's part of it that that's why they're there. But the other part of it is, is what are the activities they do? So evidence-based design is really interesting to me. It's been around for a number of years now. And the reason it started was because we weren't taken seriously in the medical community. We see it now in workspace. We see it in all these places now, right? When we talk about health and wellness and what does it mean and all those connections, that research wasn't there. That body of knowledge was not there 25 years ago. And uh, the Center for Health Design is really the ones that kicked that off and realized that if we could demonstrate some outcomes, then the medical profession would start taking us seriously and design would be taken more seriously as part of the healthcare outcome for a patient or a resident or a staff member for that matter, anyone who's using the space. Research is what informs the process, informs the decisions. It doesn't necessarily say, yes, you do this, no, you don't do that. And so the research really said that it's more about things like queuing out if you want people to go or not go into a space. You know, there's other ways of using color and it's in conjunction with lighting. You know, and so the lighting explosion of LEDs has allowed us to do all kinds of things now. So the research for me is it's, it's informative. It helps me understand. We've had the privilege of being able to present at all kinds of different venues, everything from Neocon, which is a design show that everyone knows, to you know, global aging in Switzerland this past year. We do some teaching at Clemson, we've done Stephen Austin, we've talked at Marymount, we've taught online, we've done webinars, the Center for Health Design Conferences, uh, Healthcare Design and Environments for Aging. I always tease people who work in regulations and healthcare, the reason that we get a lot done in residential care is that we hug more. <laughs>